It is no secret that I have set up and use a lot of different hardware and software when it comes to Bitcoin node infrastructure over the years. In fact, I've got a plethora of different devices over here on the shelf behind me running away. But as of today, no more. I have decided to consolidate down to a single device, a single OS, so that everything is all streamlined and ready to go. So today's video is going to document how one would migrate their LND Lightning node from their Umbral over to Start9 without having to close any channels in the process. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Bitcoin. Before we dive in, quick shout out to sponsors of the show, hodlhodl.com. If you're buying Bitcoin and you've got a few priorities in mind, like peer-to-peer -peer trading, instant self-custody, and no KYC, then this is the place for you. You can sign up there in minutes with nothing more than an email address. And once you get logged in, you scroll down, choose your currency, your payment method, and your amount, and start viewing offers right away. On top of this, they also have a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform in which nothing is ever rehypothecated. You can check them out today at hodlhodl.com or simply click the link below in the show notes. Now, when do you do get your hands on non-KYC sats, you're going to want to secure it with some of the best hardware on the market. And honestly, I love everything CoinKite's been doing. Um, I've got a disgusting amount of cold cards and other devices that have been created by them. The Mark IV is awesome for securing your stack. And they've got a ton of other great things too. The Tap Signer, the Sats Card, the Block Clock, the Open Dime. And coming really soon, the Cold Card Q1 looks insane. Uh, I've already pre ordered mine. So if you want to reserve yours or pick up anything else I mentioned here, you can head over to coinkite.com and just use code BTC sessions for 5% off everything in the store. Now, if you are looking to go beyond just single SIG in terms of securing your stack and you want to dive into an assisted multi-SIG setup, then what nunchuck.io has going on is hard to beat. Their Honey Badger program is as I said, an assisted multi-sig setup where they're gonna hold one key for you and you're gonna hold the rest of the keys in a multi-sig quorum. They will be able to be your signer of last resort when you need them. And otherwise you can move uh, funds anytime without even needing the app if you don't want to. Uh, but the cool thing about it is First of all, super easy setup. You can set it up all on your mobile device with things like the tap signer and the cold card and a ton of other hardware options. Uh, on top of this, it has baked in inheritance planning. So you know that your sats are gonna get to your next of kin without any fuss if anything should happen to you. And finally, one of my favorite things about it is that this whole thing is non-KYC. You don't have to give any personal information to Nunchuck for this to be able to work. And that sets them apart from other options out there on the market. So if you want to check them out, nunchuck.io. I also have a full tutorial on how Honey Badger works or just how the wallet in general works. You can check those out on my channel. And finally, if you're having trouble with anything Bitcoin, you need a little bit of additional help, some hand holding through whatever processes that you may be struggling with, well, you can head to my website, btcsessions.ca. And over on the right-hand side here, there's an option where you can book me for private one-on-one -on -one sessions to help you with whatever you need. Uh, and yeah, there's a tons of other great free resources on the website too, btcsessions.ca. And with that, let's dive into the tutorial. Now I wanna start off this video by saying that this is in no way a slight against Umbral. Um, you know, Umbral is great. I love what they're doing. Um, it's a nice, clean, easy to use interface. And I've had an Umbral for a long time. Um, I just kind of went through everything, kind of realized one, that the five nodes on my shelf are a pain in the ass to maintain all at the same time. Obviously, that's going to be the case. Something comes up, I don't always have time to tinker with and figure it out in the midst of doing other videos. So it was time to consolidate. And I also realized that having tutorials on, on the previous setups for other options, a lot of the applications are being 
uh, added to various implementations so I can more focus on the applications whenever I need to and somebody that may not be running uh, Start 9 can still glean enough information from my Start 9 tutorials on the applications I'm using therein. Furthermore, this decision kind of came from a perspective of what I'm looking for, the granularity with which I can tinker with and understand what's going on under the hood with Start9 uh, really spoke to me and I've been using them for a long time and I've just found that everything that I want is there and it's reliable and I have a powerhouse of a machine heading my way which is uh, the, the Server Pure or uh, the Server Pro at the time of recording this video, but uh, uh, effectively the entire thing is open source all the way through and through. Um, so I, I am gonna be showing that when it shows up and how to migrate those machines, but right now I'm using uh, what is currently referred to as the Server Run 1. It is a Raspberry Pi. Um, I've, I'll link the video of the setup that I did for it um, in the show notes and you can check that out if you like. But the whole point of this video is effectively, I'm going from my umbral here, I have LND. Um, and this was a lightning node that I set up uh, ages ago. And there's a lot of channels on it. And, and this has kind of been my primary use for umbral is my lightning node that I use a lot is is on my umbral. Um, when I set up my uh, Start9 uh, Server 1, uh, I used C Lightning. And just through use, I've, I've kind of come to prefer LND. And, um, and so the decision was made that uh, Start9 apparently has a very simple migration process if you've got two sets of hardware sitting there. So I have my Umbral obviously on right now, you can see it. And then I've got my Embassy OS that is also on and running. And uh, when you install LND, one of the options is to migrate from Umbral. As long as it's on the same network, uh, apparently you can just go all the way through it. Now I'm gonna caveat this video by saying, this isn't a thing that I could really practice in advance. Uh, so, you know, whenever I, am in the midst of figuring something out and I have a lot of hums and haws, I'm obviously gonna clip those out and kind of get down to the meat of what you actually have to do. Um, so if it does seem a little choppy or disjointed, it's because I'm. It's, it's a learning process for me as I go through. I have looked at some of the documentation, but uh, this one is being done on the fly. So uh, follow along with me and uh, let's get this thing done. Let's figure out how to migrate LND from Umbral to your start OS. Just a heads up, during this video, I may be using a few things that you're not yet familiar with. So if you haven't watched my walkthrough of the interface of Start9, then that is linked down below. I'll also be using something called uh, Zeus in passing, which is a mobile app for linking your lightning node. And I will link a video to that down below as well. And I'm also using something called lightning node connect in order to actually make Zeus work uh, so quickly and well with my LND node. And I will also link that down below. So all of those tutorials, if you're unfamiliar, well, they are there at your disposal. Okay, so first things first is um, I'm here on my main screen, on my services screen of my Start9. And uh, I'm looking here, obviously I don't currently have LND or any supporting uh, application. So first order of business is going to be to go and get that. Now you will notice that I do still have Core Lightning running um, with Ride the Lightning. Those are applications that I'm actually probably not gonna use as much anymore because I'm gonna be using LND um, and it's very easy to link up with my phone and Zeus wallet. So I, I'll, I'll leave them for now, but um, yeah, anyways, besides the point. So we're gonna head over to Marketplace over on the left and, uh, and we're gonna look for LND and it is on the main featured page here, uh, but you can also search in it under the lightning tab or search in the search box. Either way, type in LND, you're gonna find it. So you're gonna click on LND here. It's gonna take you to this page and you're just gonna click install. Now it says alert, read carefully, LND and the lightning network are considered beta software, of course. You know, it's, what they're getting at is it's early days of lightning you know, I think most people understand that. So I'm gonna hit install. 
So this will take it through a process. If I wanna see what's happening behind the scenes, I can hit view installed and it'll show the downloading process, the validating process, and the unpacking process. Once this all goes from zero to 100, uh, it should be installed and we should have access. So I'll jump forward to that. Once everything's been all downloaded, you're gonna see this screen that says needs config. So you're just gonna click on configure and uh, we're going to uh, basically create an alias for the node. Um, now, however, this, if I'm not mistaken, will copy over all of the details from Umbral. We'll see how that plays out. But for now, I'm gonna enter the old alias of uh, my other node anyways. So just BTC sessions. Um, and then it gives you a, a number of different parameters that you can set. So accepting key send means can people just send a payment directly to your node? Um, accept spontaneous amps. Amps are atomic multipath payments, meaning that people can send through a bunch of different uh, channels to get a single payment to you. Um, I'm basically gonna leave a bunch of these as is other than minimum channel size. I would like to only get channels of a million sats or more. Um, I just find that if they're small channels and the closing costs of, of closing, you know, 100,000 sat channels don't quite make sense. Um, I may even up that eventually. Uh, and then other than that, everything else I'm going to leave as is and I'm just going to hit save. Now, I'm not going to hit start here, okay? Because we actually wanna go down to actions. So this is where we're now gonna start the migration process. So when you click on actions, there is an option that says import from Umbral. Now there's two different options. If you're, so I'm, I'm recording this May 31st of 2023, um, you know, if, if you have your Umbral relatively up to date, you're likely going to be going with this option, but you can check on your Umbral what version you're looking at. If your background looks like this and you've got the options to do all these pictures and everything, then you're on uh, 0 0.5 or whatever it is and beyond. So you can go with that. So I'm gonna click this and then it's gonna ask for my Umbral IP address and my Umbral password, okay? So uh, you can look this up with an IP scanner. So there's a lot of different ones. Um, I'll, I'm gonna bring up a screen and I'm gonna highlight a couple different ones that you could use. So two options that uh, I've used in the past. One is Angry IP Scanner. You can get this at angryip.org and it's a free download. And you simply scan your system and you're gonna look for something that says Umbral in it. And then you're gonna right click and copy whatever the IP address is. And it's gonna look something like this, you know, 195.80. And it won't be those same numbers, obviously, but that's what you're looking for. The one I'm currently using is called LandScan for Mac. And I just got it off the, the Mac app store on my computer. And exact same thing, you do a scan and it'll pop up and it'll have a list of devices, anything that's on your local network. And you look for the one that says Umbral and, uh, and you'll be able to right click and copy the IP address. And then you're gonna paste it in right here. And then you're gonna put in your Umbral password and hit execute. So I'm gonna fill that out off screen and we'll see what happens next. Okay, that did not take very long to be honest. Uh, if for a few minutes I had a, a little spinning wheel that said executing action. Um, and now I get this screen that says execution complete, successfully imported Umbral data. And my option is to X out of this. And it looks like everything has been imported here. So let me just poke around now. Um, it's worth noting that LND is not currently running, okay? So if, if I go and I look at my services, you can see LND is stopped. Now that's very important because you do not want your Umbral and your LND node on your start nine to be running at the same time because it could result in channel closures, potential loss of funds. You can only run one of these at the same time. So when you do shut down your Umbral, if you're migrating, then it's very important you don't 
turn that back on because your umbral will have an old state of things, will have an old state of what it thinks you own. And when you have conflicting information like that, not the latest up to date stuff, uh, that's where problems can arise and that's where you can result in loss of funds. So very important to note, this is not currently running and we're gonna move forward from here. So um, effectively going through this process and migrating the data, it will shut down the umbral, or at least it appears that's what happened. Um, reason I say that is uh, umbral.local no longer brings up anything. I can also put in the IP address, it doesn't pop up. So that's inaccessible. I also checked on Zeus wallet, which I had used to connect to my LND node on umbral, um, and that seems to be inaccessible as well. So that leads me to believe that the services on the Umbral have shut down. However, I, I do have one of the devices that shows kind of like a ticker price on the front and like the current block and everything. I think that may be a separate service uh, outside of the Umbral itself running kind of independently because it's still cycling data there, but nothing specific to the Umbral itself. Either way, to be safe, I will be uh, turning the umbral entirely off and disconnecting it from power and ethernet and all of that because you don't want it coming back on. However, in the meantime, uh, I'm first gonna download a couple of the things that I'm gonna want alongside LND just, just to have them ready. Uh, so I'm gonna go to Marketplace and I want something called Thunderhub to manage my LND node. It is kind of my preferred way of dealing with my node. Um, and actually that within Start9 can be found in the community registry. So in Marketplace, you just go to, there's a little button that says change, and then there's the community registry. I'm gonna hit connect and it should cycle in uh, new stuff here. I can X out of that and now I'm seeing different applications. And so I'm gonna go, there's Thunderhub on the main screen. If you don't see it, just search it up here but I'm gonna hit Thunderhub, I'm gonna install that. It'll take a second, same process, you can hit view installed, it'll go through all of this and install. We'll jump back when this is all done. Once it installs, again, we'll see the config screen, I can hit configure, um, master password again is, is automatically configured. I can, I'm not gonna change uh, anything else here. Um, I'm just gonna hit save. And I'm not gonna start the service right now because LND is not yet running. Now I do wanna get one other thing. I'm gonna jump back to the start nine registry. And the other thing I'm looking for is lightning terminal. Um, and I found this is just an easy, has a convenient way to connect uh, on mobile to your lightning node. So I'm gonna hit install so that that is all good. Same deal, we'll go through this process and jump back when it's done. Same deal here, we'll hit configure. Uh, we're not gonna change anything here, we'll just leave that as is and hit save. And then again, we're not gonna launch that yet. Uh, we'll just jump back to our main services screen and uh, I'm gonna go and actually unplug the umbral before I do anything else here. Uh, again, make note that LND and Thunderhub and Lightning Terminal are all currently not running. They all say stopped, all right? So we will start those in a moment, but I'm gonna jump over. I'm gonna unplug this thing uh, and disconnect it from everything. Okay, so everything is unplugged on the shelf behind me. I made sure it's all disconnected, we're ready to go. Let's see how this works. So I'm gonna now select LND on my uh, services dashboard here. I'm gonna hit start and hopefully everything goes to plan, we'll see. So far so good, it took a few minutes. I saw some syncing messages here under health checks but now I see the green check, it says success, synced to chain and graph. So that appears to be all right. So next step for me is gonna be to go over to Thunderhub and I'm going to hit start as well. And uh, again, this will take a, a moment to boot up, but once that's done, we'll come back. 
Okay, now Thunderhub is up and running. Now just be aware, uh, under health checks, you may get a yellow error message saying that something is inaccessible initially. I was silly and impatient and I hit restart and I really didn't need to because I got the same error message. It's just taking a moment to set up and then you will get the green check. So give it a few minutes, it will work. Uh, and so here we are. Uh, this is all logged in. I don't need to deal with um, I don't need to deal with the other application that I did yet. Although I guess I can turn it on. So I'm going to go Lightning Terminal, and I'm going to hit Start, and we'll wait for that one to boot up as well. But this is again an optional thing that you can be running. So we'll just wait for that to start up. And by the way, this is the the yellow uh, error message that I got on the previous one. So we'll come back in a minute. Hopefully that'll turn green as well. And I was correct another minute or so and that turned green as well. Perfect. So everything that we need running is running. And the last thing to do is to log in to Thunderhub. So the way that we can get to that, there's even just from our main services list, we can uh, hit the little uh, blue arrow in the square here. That'll launch it in another uh, another tab or you can actually go into it and hit launch UI. I'll just do it directly here and that opens in a new window and then I'm gonna have to hit login and enter the password and the password is actually here in Thunderhub if you go and click on the um, the service and then go to config it is here under master password obviously you can't see it right now but I will click view and then I will copy it and we'll head over to uh, Thunderhub and paste it in. All right, so I pasted in the information, I hit connect, and lo and behold, would you look at that? I'm ec I, I'm ecstatic about this. I've got I've got my LND node ported over directly from my Umbral. It's now on my Start OS. How awesome is that? That was like a couple of clicks, and I'm good. Damn, I, like, honestly, I thought it would take longer or there would be a much more difficult process. That was simple as hell. Um, now, I'm going to make a note here, just so you know, when you first, anytime you shut down and turn back on a node, you're going to see a difference in uh, what's available and not available in terms of your lightning funds. And that's simply just the channels coming back online. So don't worry about that. Give it a few minutes, you can refresh, and then most of your balance should be back online and accessible. You're just forging those connections again. So don't worry too much about that. Now, if you did previously have Zeus Wallet on your mobile connected to your LND node and you go to open it up, you're going to get this red error screen. Um, simply, all you need to do is there's a button that says go to settings and, uh, and you're going to actually go ahead. You're going to click on the node itself in the top where it says Umbral. Uh, or what used to be on I'm going to click on that. Um, and then there's a little settings wheel beside it. Now I've got two nodes here. So I'm going to hit on the settings wheel where it says Umbral, the one that I'm dealing with now. Uh, and then down at the bottom, there's something that says delete. If you can see it, delete node config. I'm going to do that because that link is no longer functioning. Okay. What I need to do now is I need to add uh, a new connection. And this is where Lightning Terminal comes in. And so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use that. So we're just going to launch that right from our main screen uh, here. I'm just going to hit the launch button. OK, the password again, if you go over to Embassy, you click on Lightning Terminal, you go to config, you're going to have the password right there. So we'll paste that in and log in. Upon logging in, there's an option down below that says Lightning Node Connect. I'm going to hit create new session. Uh, I'm going to call this one. Actually, I'm going to call it start LND and I'm going to leave it as admin. I'm going to hit submit. And then I'm going to hit right here. There's a little uh, QR code that can be scanned. Um, I'm going to be clicking on that uh, within Within my Zeus wallet, there's a little plus button or if you're just downloading it for the first time, it'll say uh, you have the option to link up to a node. When I do that, uh, right on the main screen, and I'll, uh, I'll pop it up so it's a little larger here, uh, just in the top 
there's a little square that allows you to scan a QR code. So we're just gonna tap on, uh, on this side here. We're just gonna tap that square to scan the QR code within uh, Lightning Node Connect. Once we click that little QR code button right here, we're gonna scan it. It should fill in the information other than the nickname of the node, which you can set, and then you hit Save Node Config. So I'm gonna do that off screen. We'll just be a second here. All right, so I've now scanned it. If I do refresh this page here, you can now see it's grayed out because it knows that a connection has been made. And lo and behold, on my device, there's my node. I got full access uh, and I can now use this on the go mobile. I can send and receive lightning payments and I have full access to my embassy, or sorry, my start OS and my LND node. On, uh, on, on my device. So fantastic. I'm basically back to where I was. Uh, everything is all set up. Again, it'll take, I'll have to refresh the, uh, the page on, on Thunderhub um, as those channels come back online. But that's it, guys. That's it. That was, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought there might be some command line crap in there. No. If you want to migrate over, it's, it's a couple of clicks and just waiting for stuff to load up and and that's it. So, damn. Hats off to the to the Start9 team. Um, that flow was super easy. So, yeah, if you're looking to migrate over, super simple. I can't wait to consolidate down. And I honestly, I can't wait to get my hands on my uh, Start9 Server Pro or Server Pure, I suppose. Uh, and, uh, and we'll transfer everything over for that. So keep an eye out for that video. When it drops, um, I will be walking through the process. If you're looking to upgrade from um, you know, one of the Raspberry Pi devices to something a little beefier and be using still all the same info from uh, your Start9 device, That'll be uh, in the pipeline soon. And if I've already done it by the time you watch this video, it'll just be down in the show notes. So just uh, peek for that and uh, keep your eyes open. Just jumping forward ahead here by a day. And uh, I just wanted to update on one thing. Uh, I noticed that some of those channels weren't coming back online. And through some tinkering, I realized that, hey, uh, turns out that my Tor wasn't running. And so all I needed to do was just give uh, give my server a restart and then everything started coming back, no problem. So just to show you where and how to do that, if you're on your, uh, your main screen here, if you go to system, uh, you go down to the bottom here, you can hit restart. And I'm gonna do that right now, I'm gonna let it restart and uh, it will basically go through a process and it'll come back up as soon as it is done, it's full reset and then you can log back in. When I did that, then uh, I saw that syncing to the graph message again in, uh, in LND, and then that seemed to fix everything and it was all up and running, ready to go. So just final thoughts here. Honestly, I don't know why I put that off for so long. I thought it was going to be much more difficult. Turns out it was not at all. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm migrating to everything to start OS. That's going to be my home from now on. Continue to do node related tutorials. Uh, but obviously, I'm going to be working from my start nine device. And, uh, and then you can kind of glean information from the particular app instead of having to know specifically the, you know, having it be specific to a device. Um, other note here is, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you're worried about it, it, it was quick, uh, worked great. And um, I thought this was gonna be a longer tutorial turns out no. Um, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, and um, yeah, was the process as smooth for you? Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do like, subscribe, share, all those things. They help a ton getting this content in front of more eyeballs. If you want to help out the show in another way, you can hit up the previously mentioned sponsors in the show notes down below. You can also hit up my website, btcsessions.ca, to book yourself a private one-on-one -on -one if you need some extra hand-holding. And furthermore, if you really liked what you saw on the same website, you can scroll down just a little bit, and there's a lightning QR code that you can scan and zap sats to me, or you can click it. It'll take you directly to my geyser fund page and uh, all those sats come directly uh, to me and my own self custody so thank you guys again very much and i'll see you guys next time for your daily session Huddle,
Bitcoin.